I'm, I'm, I'm Cynthia Harnish Brunig, and I'm very happy to introduce two of my favorite family members. One is, uh, first of all, Chesley Gosion Wilson, Wilson, who is 84 years old and was raised at the San Carlos uh, Apache Reservation, um, and, and, uh, and his youngest son, Steve Wilson, and we have some questions that we want to ask you both. And one of the things, uh, Chesley, that we'd love to know is if you could talk about your Hollywood career. Talk about Hollywood. <laughs> huh? Hollywood. Talk, talk about Hollywood? <laughs> yeah, talk about Hollywood. Okay, I, I stopped making a movie way back in 82, 83, uh, down in Arizona. They're looking for, just like I said, they're looking for somebody to talk or pray blessing in the Apache and also sing in the blessing in the Apache. But all the moves I did, they want me to sing and talk like that. Even the Washington called me for the uh, Indian Earth Day. They want me to do the prayer in my language and then sing blessing song in my... So that was the, the Smithsonian, the Museum of the American Indian? Yeah. You did the blessing? Yeah, and there's a thousand of uh, uh, Indians up there, you know, all dressed up, everything. That's the first time they got and so they, they choose Apaches. <laughs> well, I know, I know that you appeared in uh, Danny Glover's Buffalo Soldiers. Yeah. You also had a part in Reverent with Leonardo DiCaprio. And you also uh, had an appearance in 12 Years a Slave. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that too. And, uh, and many and others. <laughs> Buffalo Soldier, yeah, that's the color. A soldier. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I really wanted to, to ask you about your earliest memory as a little boy. When you were a little boy, what's yeah. your first memory? Uh, I was staying at my uncle's place because my mother passed away when I was only four years old. So they sent me to uh, in the East Fort uh, where they raised a the little kid, you know. An Indian school? Another, yeah. We, uh, the uh, government usually sent you up there right, right away. And he didn't know my uncle. He found out within, I think I was in, the, in there for about only one or two years. So he went out and got me out because they say a bad thing about that. And I'm just like a joke. If, Talk in your own language, they wash your mouth with soap and stuff like that. So you weren't so, allowed to speak Apache. Yeah, so he got me out and then uh, even he got three kids already, uh, two guys and one girl. So that's how I raised. And he's the one that uh, don't even speak Apache, I mean, yeah, don't speak English, but he's the first one to uh, be a policeman. And, out, out there, you gotta ride a horse, not a car. Oh you gotta my. ride a horse. <laughs> 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 and there's, there's, there's a lot of drunk around because they make their own home brew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of home brew. I was a young guy drinking and shit. <laughs> uh, that's how I did. But he, after that, he finished with police, I don't know, like a couple of years or three, and then they. Uh, the first store there, right next to where he lived, where we, we used to be, right on the main highway. They got a grocery store, a little one, like a private. They, they got him work in there. Like the first one, he, the same thing, he just uh, ink kind of translated from Apache to English. Or well, whatever they want, he get it, and then uh, whoever check out. So he was real smart. Same thing with my father. Uh, he didn't speak the, uh, English, but he run a big, I don't know how many thousand cattle over there. They got a big ranch, you know, Ash Creek, that one. Yeah, I remember the you whole, brought yeah, me up there. Right, yeah. there so many thousand yeah. cows. He's, uh, he's stuck, man. He stayed there to the check 
what calf belonged to the mother, the stuff. Oh, uh, like the roundup, yeah. yeah. So in the summer, they run up, they call it. They run up together so uh -huh. they can get the right, the right mother to the right kid. Oh, uh, yeah. And, yeah, so. yeah. And on top of him, there's a stockman a boss. He's, he's in the office down at, at St. Carlos. In, uh -huh. in, in his office all day, so uh -huh. only only the cows so uh, he come around. So he, he he's a patchy too. So they talk Apache, write everything down, whatever. Wow. And I was I don't know another for about fifteen years. Yeah. Wow. And, no wonder you your Apache is so good. You yeah, were raised yeah, by yeah, so men that only how, spoke they, Apache. That's how they, they they talk to me. Uh huh. For the old people out there, they talk to you. For, just like I tell them, it's just like a recording in, in their head, and they remember mm -hmm. that. Wow. Yeah. Smart, smart men. Yeah. You know, uh, Chesley, I know because of, of your wife, my, my mother-in-law, uh, Ruth yeah. uh, Wilson, who really raised you, Steve, uh, that you know a lot about your family history. And Steve looks so much like, what is it, your great-great-grandfather, Eskimenzen? Oh yeah, yeah. And who tell me again what his name means, Eskimenson, and which I'm te terribly pronouncing. I'm mispronouncing. Well, Eskimenson. That's why even in the English they became Eskimenson. Uh huh. But a, oh yeah, Apache called Hashkebasazin. Ah. So the white man spells say Eskimenson. Ah. Uh. That means his man standing in line. You find that out after the government, you know. Oh after man! I got a hold of us. Get in line, get the number, and, and what else? And well, he tag. he was. Oh yeah, the tagging, and I want to get back to that in just a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but with Eskimenson, he was one of the survivors of the Camp Grant massacre. Yeah. And if I remember, he took two of his little grandkids. A little boy and a little girl, and sure. rolled down an arroyo so that they would not be killed yeah. by the citizens of Tucson uh, that uh, massacred the Aravaipa Apache. Are you a descendant of the little boy or the little girl? It's it's a little girl, yeah. A uh, little girl, I think, it became my my father's mother or something. Like oh that. yeah. My father on on the girl side on Eskimos. Oh wow. So, so that's how they related to them on woman's side. Wow. Are there any more Aravaipa left? Uh, Are they? Did any of the Aravaipa su survive? Yeah, those that love uh, St. Carlos, they live in St. Carlos. Love, love, oh, do they? Some of them, yeah. Oh, interesting. Took, yeah, took up there. Uh, for us, uh, uh, white people, they know us as the, the St. Carlos Apache because we live in St. Carlos. Uh huh. But we're uh, Eagle Clan. I belong to Eagle Clan. So is my mother. And my father's side is, uh, I don't know what the name of that is. It? White water people. Yeah, yeah, on a different side. So. That was your dad's side, the white water people? Yeah. And they were in uh, the mountains uh, east of Tombstone, right, where Cochise was? Yeah, right. Uh, on the south side is Tucson, then uh, Tucson Mountain. Right. And the other behind, there's uh, Fort Apache, uh, Eskimo's Glen. Ah. Steel paper, I got the paper that... I give it to, to the, the, the new uh, chairman. Uh -huh. That's why they're going to build a new, a, a new casino I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, he told me about to that. drive up there. Yeah, and that little road. Right yeah. next to, to there is the Eskimenza land. So that's where I... I, I oh, in I Tucson. Could, yeah. The yeah. old Eskimenza, which was your mother's people. Yeah. And yeah, then your yeah. father's people were the white water people. No, no, I got it all wrong. I got it backwards. Yeah, Eskimenton is on my father's, Eskimenton is on my father's side. And I'm the one to the chalk by the eagle clan, my mother's side. Oh, gotcha. I got it yeah. backwards. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for telling me. Um, so, uh, Steve, you're one of the few generations that were not raised on the reservation. 
And, yeah. and it wasn't was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so so you're a big city kid, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm a small town. Small town. No, because you were in San Francisco before. Yeah, for a little while. Yeah. And you yeah. you were as a little boy taken out to Alcatraz yeah. when Alcatraz was held yeah. by American Indian people. Mm -hmm. So, oh, wow, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what do you guys remember about that? Yeah, um, I think I was like, well, I think it was like in 70 or 71, uh huh. Yeah. So, I would have been five or six, but uh, I remember going over on the boat during yeah, the day, the yeah, in the morning, well, I guess in the morning. Or whatever. Those are white and people, they really help us out, they sent all the food. You know, from the re re restaurant and stuff, uh -huh, and the, the uh -huh. best food to the, for free. Uh -huh. And they take us a boat, a rental boat. They take us to free too, everything. They huh. try, try to help, but the government, you know, try to win, 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 win it back there to their land. So were there were there people from all over, from different tribes? Oh yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's the time that uh, what they call is a trading. You go on a training by the government, mm -hmm. so a bunch of the same college go. So I, I, I jump in. There's nothing to do in Bali, so I, so I, I, just, I go because I know I, uh, from San Francisco to Fort Worth, about seventy hundred miles or, or hundred miles. Uh -huh. So I know that place. It's real beautiful town. I want, I want to be. So I want to. First thing I got is it there. And I just got stuck there the next about oh, 12, 13 years. Uh -huh. And the company moved right over in another 12 years. I, I put in 25 years on one job. Wow. As a silversmith. I like to make it my own trophy buckle <laughs> with my big name on <laughs> So, Steve, um, did your dad take you back to the reservation so that you got to know the relatives and learn a little Apache and a little history and so forth? Uh, yeah, every year. I would go like during the summer. Every year, yeah. yeah in between the school and stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would stay for a month or two during the summer. Would you stay with your two aunt weeks, and yeah, uncle? Two, yeah, two with an aunt and uncle. Yeah. And so, did they speak Apache to you? Yeah, you know, ever since I was a, a little kid. Yeah. My dad would speak to me in Apache, so yeah, mother. and I understood, but uh, where I grew up, there wasn't there wasn't any other Apache kids or people to yeah. talk to to actually use it. So, but I can still understand it and know a couple of words to this day. So, well, he learned all of all of it from TV when they were out in the city, you know. <laughs> That's how it is all right, right, right now. Even the uh, little Apache, football Apache, they all speak English. And because of her TV, no place to go at night or, or, I mean, hang out. No shopping center. Shopping center is about 30 miles to Sapper, you know where that is. That's the only place. So that's how they, they got. Now they, we got our own school bill, finally. So they're just going to start teaching the uh, Apache, and the, they took me first, like my first name on top, because I was an interpreter for a Buffalo soldier. I was an uh, assistant coach. Like I told you, even my chair with my name on, you know, the, uh, the, director's, the director's chair. chair yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he brought me that, and I sit over here. And, well, <laughs> yeah, I got to express. Uh, uh, explain the English to Apache, Apache to English, <laughs> whoever talk, try to talk. It's, it's a shame that the language is going because so much of your history and who you are yeah. is in the language itself. And, and this Apache school, as I said, down at uh, Bodice, they took my name first. And, but it's hard. If, if you write it, it's hard. To talk, it's it's real easy, you can learn, but if you try to write that in Apache, it's dash, mark, cross, and all of those. It's hard to that's learn. Like, yeah, that's like Chinaman writing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like calligraphy. Yeah, too hard for me, I told him. 
Just so you, a long time ago, you told me a story about your mother-in-law and how you used to put a curtain between the front yeah, and back yeah, seat. Yeah, that's Could you old, tell that story? That's an old-fashioned. I remember because I was just a kid, too. He didn't see that. And, uh, I was uh, in, in, always in the, in the middle, of, behind the driver's seat. There was always curtain, little curtain. Not supposed to be, not in that. Supposed to see each other. So that you yeah. weren't supposed to see your mother-in-law? Uh, yeah, yeah. In the old days, when I grew up, it's already, you know, they, they, they try to be what white people and stuff. So they, they stop, yeah. yeah. They, they go to school with white people, too, right there, Fort Common. Yeah, so yeah. everything began to change. Oh, yeah. So it become yeah. all white, white yeah. way you try to, everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, Ruth told me uh, more about Apache history. And she said that at San Carlos, a lot of the last Indian fighters were all pushed together. So you had uh, Eagle Clan, you had Whitewater is, people, yeah. you had some yeah. that were fighting each yeah. other, and they all wound up at San Carlos. Mm -hmm. And then I know from reading the old newspapers that the clan names were taken away and, and uh, the families were given letter number designations. So yeah. it might be Mr. and Mrs. H-16. I mean, it was bad. It was. Well, the, the White Mountain, they called them because they lived there, but, but they still, same as the San Carlos Apache. They, we're all Apache. But the, then the white man says, you, you're San Carlos Apache, you uh, even you know, not related, it's just a name. The name is Chalk Guy, the White, White Water Eagle Clan. Just a clan. So that's how they got. Muscularity, too, they were first one to give up before we did 18 something. Before White, White Moon. They give up first, so they're muscularity. They, but all educated and they disappear. They all big people. But yours were the last of the fighters, and I, I believe that the Apaches at the end, which was the 1880s, or maybe the 1870s yeah, at the eight, end. Yeah, 1887 or something like that. Yeah, you, you had um, one quarter, I think, of all the U.S. military tied up in trying to uh, chase down the last of the Apache warriors. And then they wound up at San Carlos and then were shipped off to Florida and all sorts of places. Yeah, a, a few times, Rolmo, uh, he gave up about three, three times, I think. But the same thing, they, they lied to them, you know, they, no food, you're not supposed to go to hunt, you're not supposed to carry a rifle, so he just he escaped laughed. again, yeah. And all. Who, whoever wrote a book on Apache is our number one enemy, like sergeant, captain, lieutenant. Okay. We, we are smart, and that's why they give us the bad name. The Apache, they can kill a baby or they can kill a woman, all this, all this stuff. A new book came out, uh, I'm talking about uh, Muscular Apache. They went to school when they, when they live in Oklahoma where they went to school, Indian school, they finished school, and he came back and make a book on Geralmo, and his Geralmo is his little uncle or his little, you know, relative. I was there, he said, and whoever wrote this book, they lie, he said, right in the open too, that's what he said. They lied about us. And Geralmo, like I said, three times, I captured him, I captured him, Another sergeant, I capture him in, on down the line. So they, they lie, they just, Gormo just give himself up to again and then they lie to us again. So he's the one, of the, the, the last Apaches, uh, White Mountain, Sky, Gormo, uh, the, his own relative brought him in. He goes out in uh, Mexico side, where out no man's land. He's the only one. One way out and one way in, so they got him down. So that's how he got to the whoever the boss, like the sergeant or the lieutenant. And he says, the president says, if you give up, we'll give you free land, free house, 
free food, everything you want, he told him. So that's how Girolamo, okay, that's how he got his, and now they, they, they still don't like us to where we live. You don't go in Safford, they don't like the people. You guys got to <laughs> put protection, the government give you free school, free house, yeah, well, free don't house, understand that we free had land, to, everything. That, we had to fight for yeah. that. And on that. Gotcha. The way I describe it to people that don't really understand yeah. this fighting is that like, so that's how like they, if somebody came up to your house, kicked in the door, didn't knock, and started telling you to forcibly to get out, we're going to take your house, we're going to take your land, your animals, and everything, and you guys just leave. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what happened. Mm -hmm. And I think anybody would probably fight back. I, th I think that, yeah, of course. Yeah. And well, I also whether think... Whether it be Indians or anybody. Else. Anybody. Yeah. But I also think that in terms of the treatment of uh, any Indian group, I think that personally, I think the Apaches were treated more harshly than any other group because they were the last of the fighters. It is, yeah. 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 And, yeah and I we, also think... We might not be the richest tribe, but we do have a, a large amount of Arizona because of that, which, you know, you can kind of give and take, but, yeah. But that just goes back to, like, what I said earlier, you know, like, if somebody just out of the blue came and kicked you out of your house, you know what, I don't think anybody would do that. And they would keep trying to get back what they get their house and their land mm. back. Well, think about, too, is San Carlos, because... The government wanted you all to be farmers, and that wasn't part of what <laughs> no. you did. You didn't yeah. farm, you they know, you weren't farmers. Time, yeah, here they, you know. Can but you es but Eskimington, he's the only one that got his uh, farms kind of. He, he sell it to all the people. He's the only one that you bank account, $1,000. Well, in those days, the Indian only got a, you know. Smart see, guy. Yeah. But boy, things turned out bad for the era of IPA. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, it, that's the only case in U.S. history in which a town actually armed themselves and went and, and massacre, massacred an Indian group. Yeah. I mean, the town itself. Of course, there were Pima and Papago Indians and, and Mexicans and Caucasians, but the town itself went after the era of IPA. Shocking. Yeah, from what yeah. I heard, I now after you know all these years, is that they were just going off of a, a story that was written in a paper by is that right by you know some some writer that was also going by what they had heard in the papers about you know these Apache mm. people. But, you know, it's... And they were there under the protection of the military because there was yeah. a little fort there. But it it was bad. And then a, a bunch of the kids were were kidnapped and some were sold uh, into Mexico and wound up... Is, uh... I actually interviewed a family in which one of those Apache kids was raised and he was their horse wrangler. But a bunch of those mm -hmm. kids got dispersed. Some out of some... <laughs> Some of the Apache, uh, after the drama gave up everybody, some of them stayed there. Uh, they, they knew them Mexican, they married to Mexican, they, you know, all, I don't know, uh -huh. over 100, but then about some 50, 70, uh -huh. and then grows Apache, grows, 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 and then a bleak, a block. I mean, now, now they are nothing but Mexican. Hmm. I, you know, we were lucky enough to get to go to a sunrise ceremony because I know that you, you sing and are very involved with, with yeah. the elders that yeah. do that. Do you remember ever going to a sunrise ceremony, Steve? Yeah, I've, you know, they usually have those in the summertime and they have them pretty much every weekend. Yeah, so the, I would go with on them. our yeah. vacation, we'd go yeah. there, a relative put on the dance. And, and yeah, yeah, no, he's in the middle of everything, so just, one of the little yeah. kids, yeah. yeah. And I know your grandson Arthur, who's here also, uh, went to a sunrise ceremony yeah. as a little kid. 
Yeah. <clears throat> so here's a question I've always been curious about. That's a wonderful, important ceremony for young girls. It is. And yeah. what do you do for the young boys? What do the boys, do, is there any traditional? Uh, no, no, like they said, you know, <clears throat> like I said, their, their uncle or father, they just talk to them, you know, they, what, what you want to be, what to be, or act this way, stuff like that. So to teach them to be an Apache yeah, man. Yeah, they just, you know, give me advice for something, you just, you know, no. But the girl, they get a full treatment. They do that, uh, the, uh, they're almost on, on the run, they even on the run from a prisoner, uh, from the government, so wherever in the war, if the girl, uh, you know, the, what do, you, what do you call changing girl? Mm -hmm. They have a dance, dance for her, mm -hmm. out in the, in the mountain or anywhere. Mm -hmm. they, that's one thing they don't want to miss, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's they important. Were so, they were so yeah, they were so uh, pretty good at praying every day. You know, they know uh, the Creator. They call it no day, mm -hmm. and that became Jesus. And we felt, you know, God. You just, they just don't know what, what's God, this and that, and so that's why the Creator, that's what He is. Create the Creator. The world and us in there. So that was real powerful with praying. That's what helped them outrun the government a few times, a few hundred after a uh, couple dozen, three dozen. Because the Creator was with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So I think that's what, that's what I, I tell this doctor. How can you say she's in good shape? You never get sick, this and that. And uh, you, you, you're 42 year old. You look like you're, you're under that. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's it's one of the, my my father's family. Come from that my I think his mother or his grandmother was well, came 100 and something 100, 105. I remember it always to live. I already married though. That old lady that passed away, she, she used to live in St. Paulus. So I think you were born in 1932. What year were you born? Do you know? Yeah. 1932, I think. Yeah. Wait, is that right? Is it 32? The year you were born? Yeah, to last everyone, 1932. Okay, got it, yeah. got it. Very good, very good. 80, 84. 84, this last July. Yeah, and you stayed slim, and yeah. you really have taken, yeah, you know so how to take care of yourself. Me. And after that, uh, when I grew up, uh, still in school, I see my father praying every morning, standing toward the sun. Do you remember his and, prayer? Yeah. And uh, they, he got four cross, our land, you know that fence in, right there? There's four cross there, he put it there, so oh, okay. protection, okay. for protection. You know, oh, the, that's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Do you remember your father's prayer? Yeah, yeah. Can well, you say, say it? About uh, a 10 minutes uh, walk from where we live is a holy ground. There's my father sing there, he's a lead lead singer. I used oh. to go with him, help him with, you know, when you drum and stuff. Oh, nice. Oh, everything. So I could have been learn how to sing, but I left. I left since uh, when I was 21, got drafted. So from there on, I became a white man. Mm. <laughs> Living in Frisco 12 years and another 13 years in the Carson City. Well, you were in the army, and yeah. you were in Korea. You fought in Korea, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You suck. Oh, yeah. Well, I was graduated. I didn't graduate, but I just only went to sixth grade. Can't afford it to go to a white man's school, so I started working there, and I, I got drafted. I came back. Did you speak English when you got drafted? Yeah, yes, I could. English. You could speak English? Yeah. Probably, you know, from, like I said, a uh, uh, Catholic 
probably just re still remember. But From the Catholic yeah, school. Yeah, but in my mind, but I don't remember, yeah. I, I, remember. I seem to recall you said you learned a lot of uh, English uh, curse words in the <laughs> army. Yeah. Did you learned that? Because <laughs> Apaches don't curse, right? Huh? Apaches don't have curse words. Don't bad, have, bad words. You don't have bad words. Yeah, not 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 much. Yeah, not, not uh, like yeah, not like. Uh, no, now it's worse with the, with the TV. We copy the white man. Mm, <laughs> not good. Not yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. That's no, funny because it seems like whenever somebody learns a new language. First thing they learn is the bad words. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> whatever new, oh you my know, goodness. whatever. If you learn Spanish or something. Yeah. Yeah. You always learn the bad words first. Oh and then my gosh. You, then you start from there. So, so Steve, do, does anybody ever guess that you're Apache? No, usually uh, they think I'm Mexican. So they start <laughs> yeah. they speak speaking you in Spanish, Spanish mm -hmm. to me. So I just... I just have to stop and say, you know, wait a sec, wait, wait, I'm Indio, uh -huh. so I know a little Spanish. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, Indio, I said, yeah. Yeah, oh, nice. And then yeah. I tell them I'm Apache, mm. and the, uh, I think in Spanish, the word Apache translated in means like, uh, Mean person or no. fierce. That's what oh, they fierce. They're something just making fierce, it up as usual. Something like yeah. that. So, you know, some of the older yeah. Mexican people, when I mention Apache, you know, I can from see way that, back, that they remembered whatever the history, we, we came uh, from, you know, like India or whatever it is. That is a, that's, they, they call it some little close to Apache, something Apache. Then they came down here. It's, became Apache, but over when they're beginning, they sound like Apache, some... I think it's close. Athabascan, I think. Yeah, yeah, Athabascan. Yeah, oh, that's your language group, that's right. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh. I always thought it was a French word. That's how <laughs> Apache, yeah. The, for us, we don't know what the, the Apache means, and, you know, and... But so yeah, what, what what's the word for us that we call ourselves? Dene? Yeah, uh, for us in there, in there, in there yeah. uh, men or people, it's us people. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Huh. In there, men mean a lady or a man, anybody. How about how about white people? What it, what? Do yeah, you, yeah, white people is white people. white people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, in, in oh, Apache. white trash. No, in, 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 in Apache. Became a white trash. And yeah, wait a minute, sitting home. right here, sitting right here. <laughs> yeah. um, no, she meant like, how do you say it? White person in Apache. In da. Yeah. In, in da. da. Yeah. Uh, in da. There's a white people. It, you know, some white people. In da. Apache. Apache is a word. Totally. How about, how about, how about black people? Black? Black people. Well, or how do we, we say yeah, it? Uh, black, like black man. The schist is black. Mm-hmm. The, the schisty. Mm -hmm. That is black people. How about, how about Mexican people? Mexican, no, Kanye. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah not right. Kanye. And you know that. Yeah, I so forgot, you know, I forgot Steve, about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's the next thing, yeah. yeah. Let's see, who, uh, Asian people. Yeah. Asian people. I don't know, there's a... That, I don't know. For, no. Because we didn't see too many Asian people back it, then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. It's, it's, a, it's a white people, it, it can be a German... You know, Italian. It's, it's just it's the color. White. It's not the. Oh it's yeah, gotcha. White, you gotcha. Know, like, you know, yeah. White, like yeah. how he said, uh -huh. black wasn't like a person. It's, it's, it's just a color. You oh know, yeah. Like, and so, white yeah. is because we. You, you don't know, distinguish. We, yeah, yeah. We, just like the Asian. Well, we never saw Asian people back then. Yeah. 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 But, it's, uh, the ladies is is sudden. The lady in Apache is Sane. And a, a man, man is in there, in there. And a boy is keen. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, there's so Just much like to a, talk about. You know, kids. 
mother, daddy. Yeah, yeah. We, we haven't even talked about your uh, violin making, because I know you're the last of the Apache violin makers. Yeah. Uh, and we're honored, you were uh, honored as a living American treasure by the Smithsonian. Yeah. Uh, Ruth, where's the school up there? Are you U of A uh, Indian study? Mm -hmm. uh, she, she studied anthropology, so mm -hmm. she take the, you know, Apache, Apache uh, life, study Apache or Navajo or whatever. Mm -hmm. anybody. She studied Apache, that's how I met her. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. My mother in law. Then, yeah. yeah. She was working on her PhD. Yeah, there. and then uh, he, she took the picture, you know, with Wally and everything, and they went in the, in the school there. Anthropologist office. My uncle's uh, uh, the guy that make uh, raised me, showed me how to do his picture was in there. No that's how they, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, just like that's how they were like that. Okay, oh help, my help, gosh. help us. That's all we know the picture, but no story on the, uh -huh. how the body made, how it right, right. Thing. So they, that's how I make a, a history book for them to beautiful to use it, teach it in the in teach it the in the U of A. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, you, I, I certainly lot feel of places, blessed to have one of your violins. A lot of places that, you know, Ruth, he, she would stay home and would take care of a phone call, call all over the school. We went all over the school to do the uh, vi uh, video, so to be in school for the uh, History. So there was story. a record. Yeah, history yeah story. that's so important. All they know is a Geronimo. That's all. That's a, that's to the part. Yeah, everybody yeah. knows Geronimo's no, no, name. No, 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 Not no, the they. truth of Geronimo, but they know his name. Yeah. Yeah, they're finally starting to hear the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the Apaches are telling yeah. the true story of their yeah. own history. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they use they yeah, use all the history. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go? No, no, we're, we're fine. So, um, Chesley, you grew up riding a horse. Huh? You grew up riding a horse. Yeah, when we started, uh, when, when we were little kids, they got a donkey to the, you know, <laughs> the, uh, everybody uses it, it belongs to somebody, but it goes everywhere. We ride a donkey all over the mountain. Without any saddle, you know, just a rope around it. <laughs> That's how you learn oh, wow. real cowboys. All of the kids who were cowboys in those days, there's no job there anyway. So, like I said, ranch, there's a few hundred cattle there, a few hundred here, there little places all the way from uh, on the other side of Morancy, all the way to Globe. What a Great thing. Yeah. Wow, two wild cows. You, you got to be good. You know? Yeah. All of you, you get hurt. One one kid, uh, he was a cowboy, and wrote uh, a calf. Uh -huh. And he got away, and he fell off the horse, and the rope goes around here, tear his leg off. Oh, right goodness. Right in the knee. Oh, I didn't see my, my brother, my older brother, Lloyd. Yeah, mm. you know, he's, he's a cowboy up there. My father didn't work up there, so he said he, he saw that the, the horse dragged his leg away, you know. Ooh. But he, he lived. He, he did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, all he did was uh, tied up the blood. Oh, you know? that saved well, his he life. Was out. I mean, he was drunk. So. Uh -huh. And the uh, hospital clinic is about 50 miles from the mountain, it goes up down the truck. Yeah. There's no ambulance there now. And then wow. pick up truck to work. He lived after that. He got a wooden, wooden leg. <laughs> yeah, a whole one, one legged cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he was still tough, real right? Hard. Yeah, real hard. <laughs> just, uh, the, uh, like that, uh, they call it backyard cowboy. That's a white, white man, rodeo man. Right. That's what they call it because. <laughs> We learned it the hard way, you know. Oh yeah. That's what what his name is. Uh, the bull rider, the champion bull rider. He said, "You, uh, when I live in the globe, uh huh, he come on around every year, ride a bull rider." I got his picture and all. He's he's the best champion all the way around. 
Oh my God! He gosh. said, "You are Apache are are all the 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 best real cowboy." For us, oh. we're back backyard cowboys. He says. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> well, you you saved me and and Arthur too at one point because we were riding horses and my horse ran away. Oh yeah. And oh, yeah. you went tearing after my horse. Yeah. And you rescued me. Down and it was the, in a ranch. Rent rent a horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. All, rent a horse. Rent, uh, and you know, Oh, she said the, the horse. Oh, the horse. Going, stop! Stop! I'm going to go get out there and grab that. Uh, you grab the bridle. Uh, it was oh, so dramatic. Yeah. Just like in the movies. Uh, just yeah, like yeah. in the movies. Yeah. Just like in the movies. Whoa, 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 yeah, 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 I mean, he told totally me. You're supposed to pull that string back. You know, he she just hang out to the horn. Yeah. Uh, whoa! whoa. <laughs> stop! <Yeah. laughs> so, just like came and rescued me. Stop, you dumb horses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. if I could talk mean to it, it would yeah. stop. But we found out later I was pregnant, so you actually saved yeah. Arthur and me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Chesley, you've been such a good family member, and Steve, we just love you yeah. so much. Is there anything else you want to say? Because um, we were thinking we would kind of stop this, and then... Maybe have Chesley uh, say some Apache prayers and we do a whole, uh, yeah, and then translate them. Yeah. But, Steve, before we say, kind of think about if there's anything else you want to say. But, Steve, could you show us your, your T-shirt and talk a little bit about uh, the Standing Rock Sioux and what's going on in the world there? Well, um, as of the, I think around the 1st of December, they... Um, I guess the Army Corps of Engineers, I think, um, have uh, denied the uh, the gas or oil companies' uh, plans to cross the uh, the Standing Rock Sioux Nation. Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. So it's I guess they're it's. Well, that's where it is now. So, so and, and people from all over have come to support Yeah, this. so yeah. through all the people and the, you know, their people talking to other people, mm -hmm. getting out into the media, it actually, I, I, it helped. Finally. Yeah. It's kind of like when you were talking about the Apaches fighting for their land. Mm -hmm. You have to stand up and be counted. Yeah, because, you know, I think a lot of people would would do that, you know, whether they're Indian or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We sure yeah. are proud of you. Anything else either of you want to like, say? Yeah, uh, just, just like uh, I told you, like, that whoever wrote the book about us is, is uh, number one enemy. They don't even tell us about themselves. They come over here, I mean, to Arizona, try to kill us off so they can get their land back. They don't talk about that. Well, and like Steve was saying, who wouldn't yeah. protect your home? They don't, they don't talk about that. They shoot everybody else. They try to get their land back. Didn't work. That's why they really pissed off and everything. Just, Especially at the Apache. Yeah, give us a bad name. Yeah. You got kind of rugged land there, too. Yeah. It's beautiful, but rugged. Rugged. Well, we know something about Apaches, and we know the also heart of that, love. Yeah. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> also, they said, uh, yeah. we did a good thing. We sent them uh, to Florida, where it's beautiful. So they <laughs> they lie, because that's a bad place. That's where all the kids are dead. The, the weather, they won't take it. All kinds of disease, they won't take it. So so they know it's, just, it's not going to be their fault, they said. No. They sent it to the Alabama too, where it's a bad weather, same thing, too hot and... Humid, they, they weren't used to the humid. A lot of little kids, they don't last long, there was no hospital, no, no, no oh. nothing, no, no doctor, no Apache doctor, nothing. Well, and the, and the Apaches that were helping hunt Geronimo down wound up getting shipped off too. I can't imagine that worked out <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that were uh, the trackers yeah. for the army, the Apache trackers, yeah. wound up getting shipped off too, if I remember right. It is, yeah. yeah. I yeah, can't they, think that was good for yeah, anybody. They, uh, they trusted they, them. They too. don't talk about that, all the bad things they did. They just, they just 
So I forget about it and want me to give us a bad name. It's not that long ago. It was just your grandparents' era. Yeah. Not that long ago. It is. Well, thank you both. Anything else? No. No? Thank you. Well, thank you. Love you. Yeah. <laughs>